By the late 1700s, British slavers were capturing as many as 50,000 Africans each year and taking them to the Americas. So how did this enslavement of Africans come to an end? In the United States, it would take a civil war. In the British Empire, it would take a movement that included a man named William Wilberforce. While slavers were seeking slaves in Africa in the late 1700s, William Wilberforce was living in luxury in his family's estates in London and Wimbledon. Then he spent a few years gambling and dining with friends on the finest foods at college in Cambridge. Years earlier, he'd been fascinated by a young preacher named George Whitfield, but now all he wanted was a seat in the British Parliament. In 1780, when he was only 21 years old, Wilberforce got his position in Parliament. During his early years of service, William, in his own words, did nothing to any purpose. My own distinction was my darling object. Then in 1785, while on a trip across Europe, the emptiness of William's plush life began to gnaw at his soul. Finally, in the spring of 1786, following months of dark depression, William Wilberforce trusted Jesus Christ alone to transform his troubled soul. As a new believer, he thought about abandoning his political position. But John Newton, the ex-slave trader who had penned the hymn Amazing Grace, urged Wilberforce to use his parliamentary position for the glory of God. A few months later, Wilberforce received a letter urging him to work to end British slave trafficking, and he began to turn his efforts toward this goal. Now, despite his personal charm, Wilberforce was a clumsy political strategist at times. He and his friend Thomas Clarkson introduced legislation to limit the slave trade in 1789, 1791, 1792, 93, 97, 98, 99, 1804, and 1805, only to be defeated every time. Opposition to Wilberforce became so fierce that one friend feared he would be barbecued by African merchants and eaten by Guinea captains. Finally, in 1807, the efforts of Wilberforce and Clarkson combined with the news of a slave uprising on an island known as Haiti to turn the tide. Parliament outlawed the slave trade in the British Empire. The circle around Wilberforce then turned their efforts toward abolishing slavery itself. Poor health forced Wilberforce to resign from Parliament, but Clarkson and others continued this campaign. In July of 1833, three days before William Wilberforce died, it became clear that they had the votes they needed to end slavery in the British Empire. The next month, the House of Lords passed the Slavery Abolition Act. Thirty years later, slaves were emancipated in the United States as well. Christians rightly celebrate the impact of faith on the abolition of African slavery, but it's important never to forget that slavery didn't go away in the 19th century. In fact, in the opening decades of the 21st century, at least 12 million human beings live in slavery. Each year, more than a half million men, women, and children are transported as slaves across international borders. 70% are female, half are minors. May God raise up a new generation of men and women like William Wilberforce to bring an end to slavery in this century as well.